Okay, in this tutorial, we're going to take another look at the property sensors within the logic bricks, and that'll help us kind of get a hold of this a little bit more. So I'm going to just run this real quick, and this little rectangular shape just keeps rising up into the air like this. Okay, so let's take a look what I have set up on the logic bricks, and it's just this simple setup. Instead of a keyboard, I have an always sensor set up in here, and there's a couple things I have set. I have tap, and I have this true level triggering set. And the reason why is when I turn that off, see, I don't have access to this button. But when I turn it on, I can set the amount of delay between these ticks, these logic ticks that go on within the game engine. So let's just, it just, it's continually running over and over again with this little delay. So when it does, what I'm saying in here is every time this thing gets activated, then raise it up 0.2 along the z-axis. So that's exactly what it was doing. But I want to stop it. I want to get it to the point where it's somewhere up in height and then it resets back down. So you know maybe you've seen a game where you have this cylinder pops up out of the ground and then drops back down. It pops up and drops back down. Alright, an obstacle in the game. So let's go back and we're going to add we'll add a property. I'm going to call the property check height because that's what I'm trying to do is check height. Check the height of it. And I'm going to have to have a property sensor like we did before. And I'm going to have to have a property actuator like I did before. I'll set this one to check height. I'll so, I'm going to do the same thing as if when it's equal to 10. So it's going to be counting. I'm going to set these also the same as the always sensor up above. Right? And then as far as check height, I'm going to add one to it each time it happens. But when I add it, I'm going to add it also when that always sensor gets triggered. So every time it triggers, not only is it moving up, but it's adding one to the variable here like this. And with this here, now I'm saying when it's equal to 10, I want it to do something. So in, in this case, I'm going to add another motion actuator. And I'll just connect these guys like this. And so what I'm saying, when check height is equal to 10, then I want to change the height back down. Now the height in this case is going to be what basically goes through 10 times because it counts to 10. It moves it 0.2, so that's 2. So I'm going to have to raise it down, lower it by negative 2, like this. All right, so that should raise up, or we'll see, it should raise up. And when it gets to 10, it should l come back down. Yeah, it did, but let's see what I did. I might have come back down too far. What did I do? 2, negative 2. It goes up, check height, let's see, oh, got to set this frequency at the same level, too, like this. All right, now do it. There it is. Now notice, it did it the first time around. It reached that height and it reset, but the second time around it just keeps going. All right, so we need a way to fix that as well. So let's go back in here. and There's one other thing that we'll need to do it. So basically, we're going to do another check. So when check height is equal to 10, it, it lowers it back down. But we can do something else. Let's do another property actuator. Oops, got a parent actuator. Property actuator like this. And instead of assigning it a value, well, normally what we do is we've been adding 1 to the value. But in this case, we are going to assign a value to check height. And we're going to assign it back to what it was originally back to zero. So I'm going to pick check height from the list. I'm going to give it a value of zero like this. And I'm also going to connect it to here because this actuator and this actuator only get triggered when check height is equal to 10. So let's think about what happens. If check height is equal to 10, it's going to lower it back down. And if check height is equal to 10, it's going to change the value of check height back to zero. All right. So the next time around, it's going to just start over and it's going to keep counting. Because what happens is if you don't have this, this thing just keeps, this always sensor keeps adding 1 to it. It's going to go to 11, 12, 13, 14, and it'll never equal 10 again. It'll just go on forever. And well, actually, it could actually flip around way, way, way. If it goes really, really, really high in number, it can flip around. But I'll address that in another issue on programming. All right, so let's go back into here and now let's run it. P. So it goes up, resets, and resets. Okay. So then if you want it smoother, now then you just can adjust this down. Maybe move this over, we'll make the frequency 2, like this. 
there you go. And there you have a little action in the game. Just this little plunger keeps moving up and down. And you've seen these kind of things in games a lot. All right. All right, well, that's it for now. Hope that helps you with your own games or simulations. And I'll see you in the next lesson.